Welcome back everyone to the Illinois Fighting Illini Dynasty here on NCAA 14. Last episode, Illinois beat Penn State in the Big Ten Championship 38-21, winning their second straight Big Ten Championship. So Illinois will probably be playing in the Rose Bowl unless they get lucky again and somehow move up to the National Championship. But I highly doubt that since they're ranked 14. We're going to see who wins Heisman, All-Americans, all that good stuff. Eric Fisher probably won't win Heisman if he threw those two picks or not last week. Yes, Eric Fisher threw interceptions, something that happened in zero of the 12 regular season games. He did not throw a single interception in the regular season, but he threw two last week. But he's still going to win a number of awards. He had a great junior season for the squad. A number of other players will probably make All-American teams as well as win many awards. So let's see your Heisman winner is Ronnie Hall. Not too shocked to see him win it. Eric Fisher finishes at number four. Jalen Hurts, Kevin Harvey, and Chad McKnight also finish in the top five. And Illinois will be playing USC in the Rose Bowl. We'll, we'll, we'll check out all the awards later. But Eric Fisher and Illinois are going to be playing Sam Darnold and the Trojans in the Rose Bowl. These two teams faced off last year in the national championship. And now USC will get a chance for revenge in the Rose Bowl. Will they get it? So, we're going to look at the awards first. Heisman, we saw, is Ronnie Hall. National Championship will be Georgia Tech and West Virginia. Georgia Tech, it was awfully close last week against Clemson, but it looks like they won. So, All-Americans. First team, All-NCAA, is Eric Fisher. Not the Heisman, Ronnie Hall. It is Eric Fisher, as well as his favorite target, Jackson Kelly. And a number of defensive players, Brynion Booth, Charles Cook. Charles Cook made the first team ONCAA? Really? He didn't get a single interception. That's weird. Uh, Billy Ashley, Marcus Miller, Nathan Jenkins, and James Landry. What? Uh, second team, Kyle Davis. That's not too shocking. The freshman, Doug White. That's a little shocking. He wasn't that. He had a good year, especially towards the end, but he wasn't that good. Melvin Washington, he had a pick six last week. Freshman, Darius Shrub, Kyle Davis, Quayshawn Law, Doug White, James Landry, and Brent Charles. So, we'll look at Big Ten. We've already seen a bunch of Illinois players make the All-American, so we'll certainly see some All-Conferences. All-Big Ten first team, Fisher, Kyle Davis, Jackson Kelly, Doug White, James Landry, Nathan Jenkins, Marcus Miller, Billy Ashley, Melvin Washington, Charles Cook, Brian Booth. And on the second team, Darius Shrub makes it, as well as Aaron Burns, Matt Fox, Noah Goodwin, and Jonathan Hand. So even a backup makes it. Noah Goodwin, who is not a starter, makes the all-second team for the Big Ten. That is strange. Award winners. Okay, so the Maxwell Award goes to Ronnie Hall. Eric Fisher finished at number two. Walter Camp goes to Ronnie Hall. Eric Fisher finished at number 5. Benaric Award. Number of Illinois players up here, but that goes to Billy Ashley. Great season. He had a lot of shoes to fill with Delshawn Phillips leaving, and he sure filled him. Phenomenal year from Ashley. Brigham Booth at number 2. Marcus Miller at 4. Matt Fox at 7. Aaron Burns at 10. The Nagruski Award goes to Marcus Miller with Billy Ashley at number 2. O'Brien, the best quarterback award, goes to Eric Fisher. He was certainly the best quarterback. 48 touchdowns and just two interceptions. The reason why he did not win Heisman is because he did not run the ball a lot. Negative 43 yards. Those are mo mostly off of sacks. Eric Fisher is a very mobile player, but due to injury concerns, he didn't run the ball that much. Uh, the um, Doak Walker Award goes to Thomas Nash of Michigan State. Boletnikoff goes to Robinson. Kyle Davis at 6. The John Mackey Award for the third straight season goes to Jackson Kelly. Very well deserved. Outland goes to Clint Myers. Remington also goes to Clint Myers. Lombardi goes to Nathan Mullins. Nathan Jenkins at number 7. Best linebacker goes to Billy Ashley. Marcus Miller at 2. Aaron Burns at 9. Four best defensive back goes to Brynion Booth, very well deserved. Matt Fox at five, Melvin Washington at eight. The Groza best kicker goes to Hank Wade, and the Ray Guy Award goes to Tommy Small with Jonathan Hand finishing at number eleven. Best returner goes to Gerald Allen, no Melvin Washington or Cedric Bailey. Right, now we will look at all of the bowl games this year. 
So I just save the ones of interest. You can read them all. Oregon is going to be playing San Diego State. UL Lafayette is ranked. They're taking on FIU, Iowa, Toledo, Cal, Oklahoma, Cincinnati, Virginia Tech, Florida State Navy, Michigan taking on Baylor, Pitt, Arizona. I think Pitt lost their conference championship, if I'm not mistaken. Stanford, Oklahoma State on the Alamo Bowl, Penn State taking on Kansas State, Notre Dame, Utah, Clemson, Georgia, and the Chick-fil-A Bowl. This isn't the Peach Bowl. I guess this is the Peach Bowl, if you think about it, because the Peach Bowl wasn't, like, existing when this game came out. Herb Street is picking 6-6 six and six Georgia to be number 8 Clemson. Like, what? Houston, Wisconsin. Wisconsin beat us. Alabama, Michigan State, and Capital One Bowl. Outback Bowl, Bama. Or not Bama, Auburn and Ohio State. Rose Bowl, of course, Illinois, USC. Uh, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl will be TCU, ranked at number three, even though they have three losses, and South Carolina. The Sugar Bowl will be Kentucky and Nebraska. Orange Bowl, Miami and Boston College. Cotton Bowl will be Ole Miss and Texas. And, of course, the national championship will be Georgia Tech and West Virginia. Herbst is going with West Virginia. Hard to pick against Georgia Tech. They've won every game. They beat number three, well, I guess now number eight, Clemson, twice this year. Look at all these wins. 52 to nothing at North Carolina. West Virginia, they lost to TCU. TCU is really good. They're ranked number three. But Georgia Tech is hard to beat right now. Georgia Tech is phenomenal. So will West Virginia get their first national championship, or will the Yellow Jackets keep on rolling? Will the run game work? That's all West Virginia, or that's all Georgia Tech does. Or will the balanced game work? Because it looks like West Virginia does a little bit of both. So now we will look at the stats. We'll also take a look at career stats for our team. So Eric Fisher on the years passer rating was around 180, 4100 yards, 48 touchdowns, two interceptions. Absolutely phenomenal year for the Davy O'Brien Award winner. Running the ball, Darius Shrub had a very solid freshman year. He's certainly going to get more touches pretty much every single season. Next year, Illinois is not going to have Jackson Kelly, which is Eric Fisher's safety magnet. And then the year after that, they're not going to have Eric Fisher. And that's assuming Eric Fisher stays a senior year. He could declare for the draft after the Rose Bowl. Like, he may have one more game in Illinois left, which is just crazy to think. But I do expect him to stay. Um, receiving Jackson Kelly, phenomenal year. Kyle Davis, phenomenal year. Quishon Law had a, I wouldn't say great year, but I'd say better than good year. He had a very solid year. Daniel Barnes was solid. Darius Shrub was an impact receiving wise as well. Blocking the blocking, when the blocking was good, this offense was very good. When the blocking was bad, this offense was not as good. So the blocking was very important. Billy Ashley. He balled out the season with Chuck Bernard Award, best linebacker as well. 74 total tackles, 14 tackles for a loss, 4 sacks, 4 interceptions. Brennan Booth, the 4th um, award winner, and I don't know his first name. Jim Thorpe, I, th I think his name is Jim, I want to say. I'm not sure. 62 tackles, 5 interceptions, 1 fumble force. Absolutely phenomenal year for Brennan Booth. Marcus Miller, who was the Bronco Nabruski Award winner, I believe. He went to BYU, didn't he, Nagruski? I think he went to BYU. Um, 10 sacks, 15 tackles, 4 loss. Phenomenal year for Miller. The killer, Charles Cook. He made first team all NCAA, but he honestly did not have that good of a year. He just got a lot of tackles, but he had less tackles for last year. He did not have any interceptions. No fumble forces, no fumble recoveries. He had a phenomenal junior year, and he had a quiet senior year. Matt Fox, he had two interceptions. I don't think he was... The fifth best defensive back in college football, but he had a solid year. Derek Shaw had a solid year. Aaron Burns, he had a pretty good year. Melvin Washington, he made the all NCAA second team, I believe. He had a very solid year, five interceptions. Chris Wright had a decent year. Doug White, he made all NCAA second team. And while he improved so much, like the last like four or five games, he has been very good. I wouldn't say he's all NCAA second team worthy. Eight sacks, 16 tackles for a loss. James Landry. Made all NCAA first team, which I don't know how these numbers are better than Doug White, first of all. And second of all, James Landry had a solid year, but he didn't have a great year. He had an he had a he had a solid year for a freshman. 
Nathan Jenkins was solid. He made first team all NCAA too. Noah Goodwin made all NCAA second team and he didn't even start, which is strange. He Noah Goodwin played well, but I don't think he's all NCAA second team worthy. Uh, if it decides to load, Brett Charles, he had a solid year. As a freshman, I'm cool with how he played. Jonathan Hand played pretty well. So now we're going to look at um, all of the stats. Passer rating went to Sean Jackson, but he spent, he spent most of the years a cripple. Next is Sam Darnold, who, of course, this defense will be playing against. Corey London led in yards, but Washington State does not run the ball. We played Washington State back in Season 3. They probably ran it about five times that game. So he doesn't really count. So essentially, Eric Fisher led college football in passing yards. Touchdowns went to Fisher. Least amount of interceptions for a starter didn't really go to Fisher. I would say Taylor Campbell because I know Miner was hurt. I know Sean Jackson was hurt. Sam Darnold only threw two interceptions as well. Uh, rushing the ball, Darius Shrub. He was probably around like 50th place, I guess. Yeah, probably around there. Uh, Kyle Davis was fourth in receiving yards. Jackson Kelly was tied for first in touchdowns with Dan Malloy. Um, defense, Brian Lane, 115 tackles. But solo tackles, a lot of Illinois. Sacks, 13 for Eric McCullough. Marcus Miller finished in second. Tackles for a loss, 33 for McCullough and Matt Scott. That is nuts. Interceptions, 8 for Scott Kelly, Brian Williams, and Zeph Witherspoon. That's a cool name, Zeph Witherspoon. This guy attempted 28 field goals and made 14. This guy, Myron Richards, he had a very Akeem Manson-like season. And uh, let's look at career stats as well. Eric Fisher, he has over 10,000 yards, over 100 touchdowns, and like I think only 20 interceptions. Yeah, Eric Fisher is on pace to break Case Keenum's passing touchdowns record in a college career, assuming he stays next year. He's going to need about 40, including the Rose Bowl next year. And I think that should be easy for him. Once again, that's assuming he stays. Rushing rushing is pretty irrelevant to me because like Dar Darius Trump's only a freshman and Maurice Rivero's never started. Receiving Jackson Kelly. He didn't finish his career with these numbers, but these are pretty much his career numbers. He does have one more game left. Uh, 222 receptions, over 3,000 yards, almost 50 touchdowns. Kyle Davis is a freshman, so it doesn't really matter about him. Barnes, over 50 catches. Blocking, most sacks goes to Clinton Warren. Uh, defensively, the most tackles belongs to Brilliant Boo, followed by Melvin Washington. Billy, Billy Ashley has more tackles. Oh, no, that's, that's solo. Okay. Solo tackles goes to Charles Cook. That's not shocking. He gets a lot of them. Followed by Miller, Booth. Interceptions. Melvin Washington has 9. Booth, 8. Cook, 7. Sacks, 21 for Marcus Miller. 9 for Jenkins. 9 for Steve Cleveland. 9 for... I already said Jenkins. Um, so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoy. Next episode will be the Rose Bowl against the USC. A national championship rematch from last year. Ever Rose Bowl. Eric Fisher in what probably won't be his final collegiate game, but could be, and Sam Darnold in definitely his final collegiate game as he is a redshirt senior. Hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like and subscribe if you're not already. Make sure to hit the notification bell, and if you have already hit the notification bell, double-click it, because YouTube's been very weird lately, so just do that. I'm out. Peace.